Let's set sail into summer. That's right, it's just around the corner, and I will be your captain on this voyage. And who am I? None other than Indiana Jones, of course, and I am ready to get nautical with you. You know what I mean. Anyway, let's add some nautical decor to our home and to ourselves. But I'm not doing this alone. My co-captain for today is Corey of Crafted by Corey. Enough chatter. Let's get going. In our last episode, we left the heroine, Indiana Jones, with a pile of napkins and Mod Podge. And this, this was the napkin challenge that took place yesterday. Now, this was a sneak peek to what I was going to do today. And today's theme is nautical. So that's why I decided to wait and finish this project today. So what I decided to do is use this beautiful napkin that I'd gotten from Teresa B DIY and create some beads. All I'm doing is cutting apart the napkin with those beautiful little round designs that so gave me the idea. And I am wrapping my little wooden bead in this beautiful navy blue paper. What says nautical more than navy blue? Can I ask you please? This is so perfect. And I thought this would make such a lovely accessory for the summer. Now I'm just covering it with Mod Podge and again I'm making sure that the little hole that I'm going to have to string through is still open and I'm using this skewer just to be able to Mod Podge all over. Now I have to mention that after I Mod Podged all the wooden beads, I made sure to cover it again with high gloss Mod Podge or super gloss Mod Podge so they could be nice and shiny and they would actually look a little bit like ceramic beads so here I am a little bit of uh, Benny Hill there <laughs> I had to cover all of the beads for my necklace and here they all all are and as you can see they've already been covered with that beautiful super gloss and I did the same with the white I just took wooden beads painted them white and now I'm using some navy blue and speckling all the navy blue I mean <laughs> the navy blue paint on top of the white just to add a little more interest to those white beads I love it so now with all of my beads ready to go I have my wooden beads in, in navy blue and white with the blue speckles I now have to string them on not string them on but put them on to these wires now the wires have um, a head pin kind of like head pins that you use when you're sewing and I'm just putting this on so that I can beat the beads <laughs> so I can add the beads to the chain now once I have the straight pin in all I'm doing is bending the pin over so I can create like a little loop so that I can connect that with um, a jump ring to my chain the lights went out for a minute there <laughs> so here's the beautiful silver chain that I found and I thought this was perfect for this project I'm adding a little jump ring and they sell these jump rings at the Dollar Tree and again I have to apologize for the sh shadows it's very uh, you know Alfred Hitchcock look at that dun, dun, dun. the mystery hand is working with me here on this craft so I'm just putting the jump ring on the loop and then getting you know connecting that to the chain now I'm going to do this several times as you can imagine with the different beads in blue and white and I'm just uh, taking turns with each one blue and white blue and white blue and white I love the way this is looking so far it actually looks kind of like a hobo hobo gosh I always say hobo a boho type of belt not a hobo belt a boho belt um, so this you can also use this not only just for nautical look but even for boho I think it's very cool looking. Now, I also found, ooh, look at that. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. I found these beautiful little buttons in my mom's buttons co collection, and they're these small little knotted buttons. They're like silver knots, and it looks like a nautical knot, a nautical knot. <laughs> I always laugh at my own words. I don't know why. I just entertain myself, you know. <laughs> so these are these little nautical knots, and I thought they were perfect in silver to add more dimension and texture to my necklace and i think it's coming out really nice and i think this is a perfect summertime accessory now after i'm done with this chain of course i had to create some earrings how can i go out with this beautiful necklace without any earrings to match so here i'm just using these hooks for my earrings and adding them 
with my wooden beads and they're wonderful for earrings because they are lightweight and they don't weigh you down. So wait until the final reveal so you can see how cute this looks all together. I really, really like the way this came out and it's such a fun project to do and it gets you ready for all your summer accessories. I want to tell you about my lovely friend Corey who invited me to collaborate with her and create something nautical. That's right. I love Corey. She and I have been friends for a couple of years now and I just adore her. She has great ideas and is always coming up with some wonderful new ways of creating beauty in your home and using very affordable materials. Things like stuff from Dollar Tree and stuff that you have hanging around the house. So I was more than happy when Corey invited me to get nautical with her. I know, I'm just playing with the word nautical. What can I do? Anyway, I hope you enjoy these other wonderful nautical inspired ideas. Thanks, Corey. So this is an enchanted book and I got this idea originally from DIY with Karim. She has these wonderful and creative and whimsical ideas and I decided to create some of my own enchanted books throughout the years and this is one for the nautical theme because of course when you think of nautical you think of enchanted books, correct? So first I drilled with my Dremel through the cover and the pages below about an inch into the book itself. And now I'm using this straight edge knife or straight edge razor, whatever you want to call it, to cut in between the drill holes. This is the easiest way I've found to do this. I'm sure there are much better ways, um, maybe with an, a, a saw or something, a scroll saw. But now what I decided to do is use this beautiful painting that I found on Pixabay. And Pixabay does provide some free graphics just like the Graphics Fairy. And I was trying to pick out whether I wanted the larger size of the ship or smaller one where you see more of the sea. But honestly, I think I went with the larger size ship because it was just more prominent in that book. Many people, as they create these enchanted books, they decide to use Mod Podge to glue in between the pages. I think it's much more efficient and much faster to just use hot glue and line the pages so that they stay in place. I love making these enchanted books and last year I made an enchanted book with a mermaid theme. So here's a link to that mermaid theme. You can see it right here. Oh, and there's my tea, because how can I be crafting? late at night without a nice hot cup of tea. Now, once I'm done with the pages and making sure that they're all secure, now I can cut out that beautiful painting. And again, this is from Pixabay and include that into the book. So what I did is basically I'm going to be creating like a box of that image within that uh, cutout area, within that cutout, I guess, cutout area and as you can see here I am I'm just building it as if it was a box I'm framing it in now once I have that done I'm just going to slip that in I decoupage the bottom and of course I'm going to put a little bit of a hot glue on the sides just to secure that beautiful image in but now those raggedy pages are covered with that painting itself usually I cover the raggedy pages inside of my enchanted books with either rocks or moss and this was just perfect just using the design itself and now all i'm doing is securing it to the cover so that i can continue decorating the outside cover of my enchanted book so at first i thought it would be cool to cover or line the outside a book with the painting itself but then I, I don't know i went to bed i woke up the next day and i didn't like it because i found this beautiful scrapbook paper this rustic wood in the same color tones as that painting i just thought it was perfect and it was meant to be so now i'm decoupaging that um, beautiful paper to the top of my enchanted book 
Now, these enchanted books, I'm telling you, once you get started with them, you just get hooked. You love to make them for different themes. I probably have more enchanted books to come for the rest of this year. So here, I'm, all I'm doing is using my Mod Podge to decoupage that beautiful paper. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that looks with the wood. It looks so rustic and those deep, you know, blue colors and the teal colors. It's perfect for this theme, for a nautical theme. Now, at one corner, I decided to darken it. I wanted to look like like it was a piece of wood that was hanging around in the ocean, you know, it was still stuck in, you know, the ocean in the dark sea. So, I just decided to add some paint to make it look like the dark sea. Now, of course, I'm adding some highlights so it looks like the sun is, you know, just mirroring or just hitting the water or the moonlight whatever you want to call it. And originally I even thought of using spackle and making this a textured look, but I came up with another idea. Hold on people. The whimsy is just again started, you know? So here I'm taking a box um, and I'm covering it in wax paper. Why? Because I've decided to put a sculpture, not any kind of sculpture. I'm going to make a foam clay sculpture. Of what you may ask think about it what's in the sea Annie is it a great white whale maybe maybe it's a great white shark maybe but what could it possibly be so I decided to make an octopus that's right so I'm gonna make an octopus that's just waiting to clutch that ship as it sinks into its into its clutches to clutch it into its clutches oh yeah that's great great storytelling there Annie but anyway um, and by the way octopuses octopuses octopi octopi octopus those things they don't eat people just so you know that never have eaten people um, I don't think they attack them just you know they just look menacing and especially in the old timey books they always showed like these big leviathan sized you know octopus that are about to you know come out like in 10,000 leagues under the sea that's what this book reminded me that's what I, I wish I had found a submarine but anyway here I'm making the octopus and I'm making those little suction cuppy thingies the little suction thingies all over the legs are they considered legs or arms the legs and arms of the octopus look at them all there now this is foam clay you know how much i love foam clay it's very easy to work with and very fun if you have kids with you this summer buy a big old bag of foam clay they will keep themselves entertained it's it's just so much fun so now what i'm trying to do is just start putting these arms or legs um, into place so that they dry in that manner I decided that the octopus would be peeking out from over the corner of the book. I just thought it would be great. And the tentacles are going to be reaching up to that beautiful painting or that, you know, ship that is being lost at sea, that is being just battered around at sea. I just thought it looked menacing. So here I am just shaping the legs on that corner so that I can include it onto the book. And this is, I think, a very smart idea. You can either put wax paper on the book itself or you can use a smaller, I use a smaller box simply so that I can dry this in the freezer. That's right. You heard right. I put my, it's air dry clay, but the foam clay usually dries very quickly and it hardens in the freezer. So here it's been in the freezer and I think I left it, if I'm not mistaken overnight, I know it's at least three hours and it's a little bit hard it's not complete so it might have just been three hours it's not completely completely hard but it's hard enough it's stiff enough for me to paint on it now for the underbelly or the underside of the octopus i'm using black of course because i want all those suction cups to really go come through next i'm using beautiful folk art color shift paint if you've never used color shift color shift paint you will be so surprised it, this one color shifts between a, a blue, like a, an aqua blue, and a purple, and it's just lovely. So here I'm just accenting the top of the octopus with that blue. Now, I decided to paint my octopus this orangey color. This is also a color shift color, and it, it color shifts between orange and a little bit of blue, so I thought it was a perfect match for this. And I love the fact that I had that darker blue there's the color shifts. You see how it, it shifts between orange and kind of purpley? 
I'm so glad I had that those blue undertones and the black undertones. And now I'm using this dragonfly paint that goes between green, gold, and orange. I thought that would be a perfect little touch just to make it look even more whimsical and more, I don't know, I, like this octopus is just coming out of the sea. And I love how the blue and the orange just mix together. And here I'm adding little eye sockets and I created a frame for the book itself. First, I'm painting the frame molds, and these came from, again, foam clay and using molds from Prima Decor, I believe. And again, these molds are available on my Amazon shop. And I used black first because I wanted to age them and make them look very, I don't know, antique. So the black is perfect to use under gold. Now, I'm using that cement from the Dollar Tree just to connect the four corners of the frame with those that trim that I used. And here's some antique gold that I'm going to dry brush on top of that frame. And it just adds such a cool looking like old type, uh, time, you know, Victorian, uh, Euro European look. That's when we had all these ships going back and forth still. So here I'm using that cement and hot glue to glue that frame in place. I use a combination of the two simply because I think one alone wouldn't cut it to be able to hold this in place. And there you have the frame around that beautiful ship. Now, to add our little octopus. I didn't name our octopus. I didn't name the octopus. What should I name him? Ollie? Why do I want to name him Ollie the octopus? But the thing is, you're not afraid of Ollie the octopus. It's not that menacing. But I guess I don't want a really, really menacing. Maybe it's just a curious octopus that's it he's not going to hurt anybody he's just curious as to what this ship is doing out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of this horrible horrible storm now i should have done this before i did anything else and that's take some gold paint and some black paint and age those um sheets the the pages i think it's so funny because i didn't even think about it until i was done but that bright white you know all those bright white new page look wasn't going to cut it so i'm using black you know a little bit of watered down black with a little touch of gold just to make this aged and you know just a very curious a book so here you have it with the aged pages and ollie the octopus i love this i hope you like it too here is another napkin challenge uh, napkin project, <laughs> the, the cliffhanger from yesterday. So this is Imaginate um, tote bags that I had gotten at Michael's. These were only $1.98. I hope they still have them because they're a nice size tote bag and they're just wonderful for crafts. This is such a fun project to do with kids. So if you have kids that are bored home from school all summer, there's a bunch of ideas here of how to have fun with your kids. So here I'm using that napkin and I pulled it apart so it's only one ply once again. And I'm going to use this to decorate this uh, canvas bag. Now for this project I am using Mod Podge but it's fabric Mod Podge. So I am hoping that this has a very nice result. I've used it in the past and it looks very nice. So all I'm doing here is using those napkins. I cut them, cut around and cut them apart to see how best they work together. And all I'm doing now is applying some Mod Podge to that one ply piece of napkin. Remember, I took off the second ply just so that it would be one ply. So it could be, I, I just think it looks so much nicer. It almost looks like fabric itself. So now I'm going to take that wax paper that I had put it on originally, and I would suggest you use wax paper or parchment paper because it makes it transferring of the materials from one place to another it makes it so much more convenient to have it on wax paper or parchment paper whatever we have to have happen to have on hand so now i'm doing the same thing to complete the design and this is including a starfish so i just i just love how this is turning out i'm really surprised myself because i thought oh it has to be iron on and i don't have time to create one but there you have it, the two napkins put back to back covers more like a third, two thirds of that book, uh, that book bag, I'm sorry. And, um, or this tote, I should call it what it is, a tote bag. And look how nice it looks. What a perfect accessory to add to your necklace 
for this nautical look. And then last but not least, I found this cute little red anchor at the Dollar Tree and I thought how cute to add this to the bag. Now I ha I'm, ha I'm ready to go shopping, to go read a book by the sea and carry my sunscreen and a bottle of water. There you go. Okay, this is definitely a fun project to do with any kiddos around the house. Haven't you ever built a, you know, a sandcastle and want to bring it home with you? Well, here's one that'll be there for you always. So first I'm taking some spackle and I did water it down just a little bit. And I added some glue just to make it like a more, more pasty kind of spackle and it won't be so crackly. If you add glue, it doesn't make it as crackly. So now to the spackle, I'm just adding sand. And if you don't have sand, they sell sand at the Dollar Tree. You don't have to use sand. You can actually use the spackle and put some baking soda on top and, you know, color the baking soda in a sandy color. Although there are white sandy beaches here in Florida. And this is sand that I just got off of a lake somewhere. So, you know, after I put it together, I was like, you know, there could be sand fleas in this in this cup, but I'm not going to worry about it whatever it is what it is it's nature there's the sand and look how nicely it adheres to the spackle this is such a fun project again how much fun would this be to do with your kids it's like you know you can use a one of those offset spatulas that's what they're called and put it together and just you know you frost that little form and i bought that at the dollar tree and i also bought these cute little shells as well they come in those adorable little bottles that you can use for anything else but what a fun project to put together with your kids or even just yourself take some time and make a sand castle today and of course you can paint you can paint the shells any which way you like if you want to make them pink and blue or aqua just so much fun that you can have with this project so i hope you take some time this summer and make your own little you know always forever sand castle and there you have it So thank you for joining me for this little voyage as we got nautical together. I know, I love using that word. But every voyage is always so much better when shared with friends. So I am so happy that I was able to share this collaboration with my dear sweet friend, Corey of Crafted by Corey. Remember to check out her channel and her video in the link below. As always, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spend with me and most especially for the wonderful, sweet comments that you have been leaving for me lately. You have no idea how much you encourage and inspire me with every kind word that you share with me. So I hope I continue to inspire you with lots of fun, whimsical ideas. As always, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure and make it a little nautical. And remember, if you did enjoy this, come back for more and like, share, and subscribe so I can see you once again. Thanks again for helping me reach 10,000, guys. I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bon voyage. Ha <laughs> ha.